And we're back. And we're back. Welcome to the Cavalry, ladies and gentlemen. Good to have you here. Got a special guest. Guess who? It's America's favorite moron. <laughs> Yay! It's Jason Russell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Cavalry favorite. We how, uh, are we how are we, men? How are we doing? We're on all parts of the country. Oh, actually, Andrew, I'm closer to you. Where are you? Los Angeles. Oh, I'm in Torrance. Oh, Torrance. Okay. Torrance, where Phoebe was born. You you told me that, and uh, we want to still find out the hospital because I think uh, when I sprained my ankle, that um, that was the hospital I went to because it's right down the road from us. <laughs> we talked about that. It was the Our Lady of Christian Faith or whatever, where they wouldn't they wouldn't tie Aaron's tubes while they were in there because they're like, ah, that's not religious. So well, that's that why is I not get my. <laughs> that is not the hospital. <laughs> that is not the hospital at even close. It's got some, you know, flaky hospital name, but Johnny, are you sporting a ponytail? I, I am. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Johnny's had a ponytail for like, I don't know, three years. Aren't you guys like best friends? <laughs> I don't, I don't see him. We don't <laughs> we don't FaceTime. <laughs> Johnny, come on, get in the picture. Uh and I know he has long hair. I know he has long hair, but I don't think I've ever seen him with a ponytail. Or maybe wow. I have. Yes, he has. He's seen me more with a ponytail than any other kind of style. Because this is not the first time I've had long hair. And every time I've had long hair, it's in a ponytail. I'm I'm secretly jealous of Johnny's long hair. I've always wanted hair like that. There's a guy who will put dreads. Uh, he would. He could put dreads on my hair that nobody ever would know that they're not my dreads, right? And Fanny goes, "Yeah, go ahead, do it." My wife goes, "Go ahead, do it. Try it." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do it." And I, I got a hold of uh, the guy's representative, and he's like, "Ah, it's uh, two hundred fifty dollars for the sit down, and then if you need anything else, it's another charge." So I was like, "All right." And then I thought, if I'm out one time, and somebody goes. Hey, those are really nice dreads. I know me. I will go. They're not mine. And then it's going to ensue a whole conversation that's just going to get weird. There's no way that I'd be able to lie and pretend like, oh, yeah, because they're going to say, how long have you grown them? And I, and I just I can't do that. There's no way I'd be able to just like, well, then don't get what, them. You don't. Why, what's what's the problem with just saying, oh, yeah, they're not mine. That's what Adam Duritz did. He didn't hide them. He didn't act like they were his. Who? Counting Crows lead singer, hello, heard of him? <laughs> Comes up a lot. Yikes. Uh, Comes up a lot. <laughs> Jason's he, obviously not an avid listener. So you're telling me he you see he seriously put fake dreads on? Well, not anymore. He look like during get, the pandemic, he shaved his head. Look at you getting all judgy with it. You're just about to do it. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I, no but I'm saying no, no. I was saying that if he did it, I would like to know. If people, I just, I know myself, I know myself. I, I, I envision the first person going, oh, those are really cool dreads. And if they got away from me really quickly, <laughs> or if I moved away from them, then I could probably do it. But if it was like an airplane or, yeah. you know, then I know I would be like, hey, listen, come here. <laughs> those are really mine. It's glued on here. And so Fanny's like, no, then don't get them. Yeah. All right, so boys, I, I I like that. Uh, I would you were like, don't make fun of me because we had just a tiny bit of technical. You you said with the iPad or whatever. You're like, oh, you're gonna make. I'm not gonna make fun of you that for that, Jason. But I will say, you, he provided me with one email. I won't give the exact email, but it's it's funny comic something something at Gmail, yeah. right? Yeah. And he goes, oh, actually. Don't don't use that one because uh, it's it goes to my that doesn't go to my iPad. Use this other one, Jason comic. So I was like, <laughs> is that <laughs> which one do you use when you're trying to get book? Do you use funny Jason, comic or Jason, Jason comic. comic? Jason comic. Jason had, comic. I, you don't use I, funny. You should use funny comic. That seems like better branding. Yeah. Well, I just That's got a sales the sales pitch right there. 
my email was, you know, it was given to somebody or a lot of people. So now I'm getting, hey, do you need dentures? Do you need siding? Do you need gutters? So I had to get rid of the, the one, my main email. And that's, so that's a new email. That's why it's not on my I iPad. see. You should start one that's called shitty comic 489 at Gmail and have that be where you have the spam right. go. You know what? That's actually a great idea. You, we should all start like, five or six emails accounts like uh hack comic 69 and <laughs> shit fest 22 and this guy sucks at comedy.com and then like right before you send the veils into a a booker send the veils from those emails for like a different comic for that shitty comic like five in a row and then they go oh my god i'm getting all these shit hmm who's this funny comic at gmail <laughs> huh? Well, I knew Johnny would uh, find find fault with something that I I did. So I I thought you guys were sitting there like, and he I could just hear him going, "He did what? He doesn't have the app on. Let's call somebody else." <laughs> no, we have no <laughs> other we have no other guests. We're only having you back <laughs> on because you come up quite a bit on the show. Because Johnny's always like uh espousing you your... gotta yeah you gotta you yeah. should be listening you I'll, let's hear your side of the story you tell andrew the story about you getting in trouble on the ship and what you did just, just before you before you do it's just occurring to me now a lot of johnny's topics you remember the the style of the show we bring yeah, topics yeah, yeah. yeah so a lot of times what johnny's topics are are just the opposite positions of things that you've done <laughs> or argued so that's I like why it. we're always we're talking about it. And then it's like, oh, is this just Jason did this to you? He goes, yeah, yeah it was Jason. <laughs> I told my wife tonight, I go, because I asked her for some ideas. So she knows me the best. And uh, we're brainstorming. And, and, and I go, well, I got about 10. She goes, well, how many you need? I go, I don't know. We're about an hour. I go. And she goes, remind me of the format again. I told the format that I got to get somebody. I go, and I know Johnny's not going to agree with any of mine. And she started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> if, John, if Johnny says day, I say night. If he says hello, I say goodbye. So I have no clue why we're friends. And and for those <laughs> listening or watching, that you don't know this, Johnny Beaner is colorblind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally. And that's come up on the show. You're clear. You clearly don't listen. <laughs> we've been doing this for three years. They're, they're, we've exhausted that. Trust me. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. You Every know, angle of that has been covered. You guys can yeah. see I'm a little darker around the edges. I don't think Johnny knows that I'm black. Oh. Um, Gee, yeah, Johnny, can you tell the difference between races with your color oh, blindness? I always, I always thought Ch uh, Jason was a Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord! So tell us, so tell the story about how you got in trouble on this last one. Yeah, with the mom. What an all time! Wait, wait, wait! What an all time transition! I always thought you were a Chinaman. Anyway, tell us the story about how you got in trouble. No. Yeah, you give me trouble again. No self -awareness. All right, so I will not. We, of course, we cannot <laughs> mention the cruise line. Right. Uh, okay, we so, won't mention the cruise line. So, no show um, banner. It was, it was a, <laughs> yeah, it was a family show, as you know, you, we have to do on uh, particular ships. All ships actually have to have family shows, you know, and there's kids. And there's this one mother who is, she's texting. Now, I like to partake in, you know, interacting with the audience in, in between my, my, my uh, material. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this woman, I, and I'm fluid. I'm, I'm rolling. Everything I'm doing is gold. And I look over and this woman is texting. And I'm like, oh, that's nice, mom. Text, that's, that's a good example, mom. Text at the show with the kids right in front of you. And yeah. then I proceed to, now that could have been the problem, or Johnny believes this is, <laughs> where I start mocking the child, not mocking the child, but mocking mom in the child's voice on what the child might be saying. And I, it was like, Mommy, why do you always have to do that? You Every time we go to an Asturian production floor, you never listen to what is going on. Huh? <laughs> That's... That was uh, that was called a complaint right there. And I don't know. I wonder. I, I wonder why. I wonder which one it was. <laughs> who's who's to say? Who's to know? Which yeah. which? I could give you, I could give you more detail, but 
she has, let's just say this, because if I say it, then it might, she has a very high profile job. So, which when I heard from my boss, I was like, oh, well then, she, you know, why is she, and then I was like, oh, no, 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 no. This, this, this job makes her not have a sense of humor and she's prideful. I mean, this is, she's got a pretty impressive job. I don't know what she does for the organization, but if I said it, you all, everybody listening would know immediately it's a, you know, it's a worldly um, organization. So garbage she man. <laughs> she just didn't have to. garbage person. Oh, yeah, thank I'm you. a garbage person. God, Andrew. She, oh, I get canceled. Just, she just didn't have a sense <laughs> of humor. So, but yeah, yeah, that's, that was one of them. There's another but, one. Yeah, but but wait, 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 wait. You, you know, doing like you just said, like if you do these um, ships, they have rules and family friendly, but it's not just like family friendly. Like you are like, it's like these big corporations. Yeah. So you had to know, like doing the act. I think it's the accent. Yeah. That's that I probably so, caused too. the problem. If if we're just no, being, but, but you know the thing uh, that made Johnny and I r double over in laughter. That's the one that was a little hmm? problematic. Yeah, but and, I. I this is the thing is when you do something and, and you get no complaints, you're like, Oh, okay. You know, you know, Andrew, you test the water yeah. on chips. And then that's right. So, so I've done it before. And, and these Indian families come up to you like, Oh my God, that was so funny. But you did that. that was so incredible. You made right. fun of my, so then you hit one, you're like, Oh wait, am I like, and then my boss, said something, my boss says something really, really, really profound. And I was, it stopped me dead in my tracks and I stopped feeling sorry for myself and getting, he goes, he goes, listen, I go, I go, do you want me to write an apology? He goes, no, he goes, absolutely not. He goes, you, you have to stand by what you do. And if you do, then that's the end of it. We'll, we'll talk to her and she'll, she just wants to be heard. And he was right. I do stand behind what I, what I, I didn't do it with malice in my heart, but no nefarious, you know, intentions. It was just in the moment. Um, I honestly think that because the the the, the six year old girl, the, the nine year old boy, they were laughing. The older man, which I assume is her dad, was laughing. I didn't really hone into her, but um, I think this is just me. I think she got mad that I like said, yes. "Hey, you know, you're texting in front of your kids. Good job, mom." Yeah, and that she, is uh, almost more. That is probably hits a nerve more yeah. than the, the funny accent. I, Judging I someone's parenting. But then she can use she can use the fact that you did this culturally sensitive thing. Yes. yes. And really, the reason why she's pissed off is because you questioned her her mothering. Yes. And then I was telling Johnny what happens sometimes on these ships is the person that complains about you, you're still living with them for the next five days. And it happened, it happened to me in Puerto Rico. This woman comes up to me in a shop and she goes, uh, she goes, you guys should stay for the speak speaking show back there in the back. And I go, no, we're the entertainers. we got to get back. She goes, I know who you are. And I, and I kind of went close to her. I was like, oh, she saw the show. She's a fan. And as I got close, she goes, I know who you are. You're not funny. Now, uh... Johnny and I have always had these, like, what do you, I, I never know how to respond to these people. I, you know, I'm a people pleaser. So it's, when it when it's that bold in my face it's like but 10 minutes later oh man i got so it happened with her and it happened with this woman whereas later in the in the cruise i had dinner with this couple and they had seen my first show actually they took me out to dinner to one of the pay restaurants and they didn't see my second show they finally saw my second show that woman who said you're not funny she's coming in the gangway right we're all meeting like in the same area where you get on the ship he turns around and he's just one of these country guys. He doesn't care about anything, but what he, he's, he turns around, he's like, Oh my God, motherfucker, you were funny as shit. And she's standing right in my peripheral. And I'm like, Oh, I'll keep it up. Keep saying it. Cause she couldn't say shit. And then it happened with this situation. I got on a bus in Seward, Alaska to go to the grocery store. And now I only recognize this, this woman, that I got this last complaint on if she's with her family. I, I don't really know what she looks like. So I got on and she looked right at me and I looked right at her just because I I was, I, I looked looking at people. And as I sat down, I noticed she had the little girl. I'm like, is that her? And then I look over to the side of me and it's the older guy in the boy. I go, oh, that's them, that's them. 
And then right after that, Andrew, this family's like, you're the comedian. And then they would not stop. They were loud. They enjoyed the show. And I was like, oh, in my mind, I'm like, just keep saying it so she can hear it. Keep saying it. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes that happens where you get a little punch back by other people saying yeah because most like even probably as it was happening you're probably like killing with that in the room so most people were like oh yeah this was a great show you know he's not making fun of me this is fantastic well of course yeah when it's not directed at you yeah oh i can tell you what was the other johnny what was the other one that he had to come on and defend himself about Oh, I just yeah. When you were uh, was it when you you were talking about when you told me about how you got you, what? you told me how you got arrested at the airport in Milwaukee, and I was like, oh, yeah, what yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh my god. Well, I said I had a bomb, and they made a big deal of it. I like yeah, I like totally downplayed. I'm like, oh well, you know, I yelled out not a bomb. Okay, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, my daughter surprised me with a trip to Egypt. Um, we bought these essence oils. They're like $170. They come in these little, if, if anything, they're just above three ounces. Cairo let me get on the plane and fly with them. Heathrow in London let me get on the plane and fly with them. O'Hara let me get on the plane and fly with them. So these I think it's just O'Hara. What did I say? <laughs> what did I say? He said O'Hara. What a dick move. I know. Why? He's, he's a, <laughs> oh, don't, worry. don't worry. I had to. I couldn't yeah. let it slide. So uh <laughs> so he, he uh I get to Milwaukee. Now you know it's a it's it's a long flight. I'm I've just been I'm exhausted. I just want to go home because I have to fly back to Wisconsin because that's where my daughter, you know, got me a ticket back to. I had to fly myself back to LA. So and, and there's, you know, there's no excuse. I did what I did, but so she's training. She calls the guy over and I got, I, I've been checked. So I know I got sand from the, from the pyramid. So I know I'm going to get checked. I don't care. So she, of course they got to make a guy, he, he's training. So she calls him over and she's like, okay. And, and I'm just like, all right. He picks up a very expensive, uh, if, I, if it wasn't glued to the thing right now, I'd pick it up. It's a very expensive mask that I got from Memphis, uh, Egypt. Uh, very unique so he unwraps it i know everything's going to get unwrapped i have no problem with that but as he's as he's talking he almost drops it and that's when i started to turn red i was like hey excuse me can you put that down please you almost dropped he goes i got it i go no you don't got it can you put it down and he won't put it down he's seen it it's it's okay just put it down as you're as she's talking to you so then she pulls out the essence of the oils and she goes, oh, you can't fly with these. Well, Jason just went a little wacko. And uh, and I go, what do you mean I can't? I said, I just flew through three major airports over in Europe, two over here, Chicago. They had no problem. And those are about three ounces. She goes, you can't fly with them. And it just went from there. And as she's, as she's looking at him or whatever, I don't know, she's testing him. I go, yeah, they're a bomb. It's, it's a bomb. Well... You, you go to jail when that happens. <laughs> you, don't, you don't yell out or you don't. And I was not, I was not quiet about it. I was, I was quite perturbed. Uh, and, you know, the, the sheriffs come and, and it gets real really quick. <laughs> Where do they take you to airport jail? Oh, no, 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 no. They took me downtown Milwaukee. You're kidding. Oh, no, no, no. It was a, it was a, basically, I spent eight hours. Literally, one of the sheriffs was, it, he was he was the coolest and he could tell you could tell he did not want this to proceed but he had no choice because they filed they they made a complaint out there in the airport the TSA okay no. so so he holds the he holds the oils up and he goes they look like three 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 ounce three ounces to me and I go thank you and now Andrew I thought they were letting me calm down I thought they were just waiting to see if I you know I would I was not going to be a problem on the plane. And that's not what they were doing. They were out there talking to them. They wanted to file a complaint. And once TSA files a complaint, that's it. You're going, you know, they have to do the whole process. So it took oh. me downtown and I had to spend eight hours while they booked me and blah, blah, blah. And at the end After of it- After flying it, home from Egypt. Oh, yeah. So you've already been traveling for probably over 24 hours. Yeah. 
and so then they released, yeah, they released me in eight hours. Oh, it was horrible, bro. It was. And horrible. then where were you going from Milwaukee? You were going back to LA. Yeah. So that that flight's gone. That was that was. I now and I have to buy a new flight. Uh, my friend came and picked me up. I gave her all my stuff, and she just sent it to me. Uh, but yeah, that was. <laughs> you have to pay like a huge fine. How did you? Uh, I got the lawyer down to uh, fifteen hundred dollars, and <sighs> they took away my my TSA privileges, my pre check, so I don't have that anymore. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's like the worst, worst thing. That is the worst thing because I hate taking off my shoes. Uh, they so. took away your pre check. If anything, <laughs> for, five years, for five years they took it away. So uh, if anything, they should give you lifetime pre check because they're like. Well, no one's been more vetted than this guy. He claimed it was a bomb and it wasn't. And then we actually searched him. We took him to jail for eight hours. Nothing happened, you know. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was, it, 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 was a learning, it, was, it was a learning experience and I was in the wrong 100%. I was, I was swearing. I would not want to walk up. You know, you, we all fly for our jobs. I, and yeah. I can tell you right now, uh, especially with, doors falling off and tires falling off and you know it, i would not want to walk up and hear some guy say anything about a bomb that would not make me feel comfortable at i wouldn't all. care in the context of what how you were doing it i'm sure i wouldn't care i just feel like oh that guy's pissed off at him yeah i'd be like leave him alone leave him alone let him have his it's, bomb yeah it's it's oil it's essential oils clearly <laughs> let him have his bomb even if it is a bomb he's probably not on my flight what are the odds? holding up the line uh, uh that the what you what i thought of too when you're talking about like you have these rare oils and this mask from egypt you're like and the guy almost drops it like this sounds like how one of these disaster like mummy movies would start like you're flying through with this and then he breaks the mask and the spirits released and then the oils get out and the next thing you know there's a mummy terrorizing milwaukee yeah, from oh, you're, you you do a podcast with one right there. There he is. <laughs> what? Who spends a hundred and seven? You're a mummy, Johnny. Three ounces. <laughs> yeah, I know the, oils. Well, they're they're essence oils, and you know they when you're over there, they take you on these excursions. But and I've learned that uh, on on other excursions too, the people the the persons that is is um like the the. I don't know what you call them, the guide. They have deals with restaurants. We we got we left one pyramid, like the red pyramid and a bent pyramid, and we stopped at a rug factory. A rug. I was like, the hell's this? And I re I realized this is part of it. Like they they have deals with these people, and these are very very expensive rugs. So you go downstairs, you walk in, you sh they show all the people making them, then you go upstairs and they try to sell you rugs. So that's I I get it, I get it, but I'm not buying what a are you rug. What do you do with these oils? It's $170. You you bar you just put them in a little thing, you light a fire underneath it, and it it you know it goes throughout the you the fly house. with them. You just fly around with them and put them in get, your carry-on. Get sent to prison. Listen, oh. I knew I knew they were gonna check my bag every stop I had to make because of the sand. Come on, it's sand. So I know, you know, it's a bag of sand. They're gonna they're gonna think it's whatever. So I had no so that's what I thought. She, that was going to be a problem at every airport and it wasn't they were like what is this i'm like it's sand they test it boom i'm on my way so ugh, i learned my I, I learned my lesson don't don't yeah. yell out don't yell out bomb don't yell out bomb at an airport well there, how, i mean in fairness to you how could you have known until <laughs> until, until <laughs> it's not like there's a sign up or anything <laughs> i should have said Come on, there's no sign that says you can't say bomb. Where is it? Show me. This is America. Yeah. Is that America. pepper spray? Why are you keep spraying it in my eyes? Okay, here. Let's let's uh oh no wait. Can I tell you the one other time I got five complaints in a family show, Andrew? Five in one show? Five. You know how bad that is. That's not yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, real quick. So I'm doing a family show. And my wife knows the story. She, she, you know, we, it's not like I'm saying something that, so there's a group of teenagers that left the show, right? They, they stayed for like five minutes and yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody goes, somebody goes, Hey, uh, 
he left his cell phone. I go, oh, get, pass it up here. So the audience passed it up. Mm -hmm. I'm in a bigger theater and I'm trying to get in it. And as I'm trying to get in it, I hear from like the opposite side of the theater, that's my son's phone. And I'm like, yeah, right. And I got a big laugh. And she goes, no, I'm serious. I go, is this really your son's phone? She goes, yes. I go, well, why did he leave me there? She goes, he does that all the time. So throughout the show, I'd go back to it and try to, I, you know, just kept going back to it and getting laughs at various things I was trying to do with the phone. And then at the end of the show, I go, all right, mom, come back up here and get your son's phone. As she starts to walk down the stairs, I realize, I realize she is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen next to my wife and my daughter. I'm just, I'm like, I'm just like, I'm stunned at her beauty. And as she gets closer and closer, she's just, I'm like, wow. So I'm trying to think of the things that I can say or I want to say, but I can't because I'm just like, I'm taken out of, I'm like, this woman <laughs> is a mother? And she had three kids. That's another thing. She had, he was just one of them. So I'm like, wow, this woman is just, and you know, I said, I don't know what I said. I said, wow, this, here comes mom. As she gets the, as I hand her the phone, you guys ready? I pulled on my pants and started beating off. And I got a complaint. I'm just recording, recording as myself I, jerking off with her son's phone. As Oops. I hand her the phone, I go, and, she, and then it's, it, I think if she wouldn't have did this, I might not have said what I said, but she gave me that smile like, hi, Mr. Comedian, I'm mom. And I go, and as she walks away, I just stared and I go, and that's what we call in the business a mill. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was in the family show, Andrew. Good night. Woo. Yeah. So I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I'm not even aware that I said it. If I wouldn't record myself, sometimes I don't even, I'm like, I didn't say that. So I called the assistant cruise director for something. And I said, hey, were you in the show uh, last night? She goes, no. I go, well, any notes? She goes, uh, yeah, you need to talk to the cruise director. And I go, and she got serious. You, like, knew, you knew. No, 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 no. no. Wait, 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 wait. No. Wait, well, who asks if there were any notes on your show? No. If I've never done that. <laughs> no one's done that. You subconsciously, you knew something was wrong. No, no. I'll tell you where I got that. When my first contract, it was uh, 10 weeks. And, you know, I'm trying to soak up everything that you're supposed to do and not do. And this one comic, he said, he goes, you can do this. You don't have to do this. He goes, he goes, it just helps my mind. He goes, I walk up to the, my boss every night and I go, any notes? And that way it's a way for them to say, oh, well, I didn't like this. I didn't like that. I, I do that all the time okay. on the ships. Okay. Just, to, just to get an idea if, if there's anything that they don't want me to do or, or they, you know, they don't like. So more times than none, it's, they're like, no, everything's good. But every now and then, well, this was one of them. She goes, well, you need to talk to the cruise director. I go, about what? She goes, well, you, you got five complaints last night. And I was like, five in the, for the two shows? She goes, no, in one show. I go, the adult show. She goes, no, the family show. Now, I'm telling you, I had no clue what she was talking about. I, I was like. I didn't do anything in the family show. What, what, what could I possibly? So I tape all my shows. I listen to it all. And when I said that, I was like, you idiot. What did you say in a family show? Why would you say that? And I'm just sitting there like, oh, you're an idiot. You are just an idiot. And then I went in and just got on the apology before she could even say anything to cruise director. And she's like, yeah, I can't, you know, we, we can't have that. Just want to make sure you're on the same page. And I go, oh, absolutely. I don't. I don't know why that came out of my mouth. I'm no excuse. Can't do that again. She goes, no. So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> you. You cannot wow. say Let milk see. in a but, family show. But it seems like you're well liked enough that none of these complaints are hurting you. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. these people complain, well, but but everybody's happy to have you. You know what I'm saying? Like doesn't seem anyone's actually that upset. The passengers are complaining, but it's not affecting your standing with the. No. Are you are you no. blowing all the cruise directors <laughs> before <funny>. the <laughs> no. like, I want to say motherfucker tonight. Can I let me pull your pants down? <laughs> what I think what I think is going on is that uh you know you, you know this, Andrew, and I'm the 
you too, Johnny, is that if they don't hear your name from anything else, like they, you just go do the show, they deal with you. If you have questions, you call them. But other than that, if they don't hear your name all week, you're good. You don't want you don't want the cruise director or your boss because the cruise the cruise director is the first person that's going to get called if somebody's complaining about you. So I do everything that I'm supposed to do. I don't I don't you know I get along with everybody, and I think these they know we're the one person we're the one person on that ship that is going to get complaints. Now the food's going to get complaints, the housekeeping's going to get complaints, but you can the, these ships know. Okay, well you know we antagonize. That's what. We, we do so one or two here is okay i think i hope but no if yeah, I got, yeah 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 if you got five every cruise you're not working on ships no more yeah well uh I gotta ask, andrew i've been i've been wanting to ask you this because you you do you are you a cold person or a hot person meaning your body temperature oh i i run well wait i like it colder i guess to say oh my god I cannot stand these ships rooms because you cannot turn. There's no, there's no idea of heat in these rooms. There's not like a setting where you can turn the heat on. And no, I know. If- yeah. What is going on with cruise ship stateroom thermostats? Like there's no, like, it's, why can't it just be a number? You can't, it's it's yeah, always it's- like hot, hotter, cold, colder, coldest. <laughs> like there's no, like what? It's yeah, so, but the thermostat that- doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. But not only that, if you if you turn it on heat, and there's only one ship that stayed on heat the whole entire cruise, it the if you most of them if they have, does have a heat setting, it will only stay hot for like five minutes and then it gets cool. You know what I mean? Like it, it yeah. cycles itself. So whatever. That's the one thing that drives me nuts about because uh, I'm I'm always cold, always. Today at the PP doctor, Johnny. Oh, that's what we have to talk about. Yeah, you got. We got to talk about that. You're never gonna guess what Jason has to have done. Oh my god! <laughs> no. Oh my god! Get me off of the oh. Zoom. That means I'm next. <laughs> well, hang on. Let me show you guys. Let me look ah, whoa! Whoa! <laughs> whoa! No. So, Johnny, of course text me and i was like what is that and i was and he told me and i i am like i had to sit down like i'm not lying i had to sit down because when i was a child i had to have what he had done as a child my mom did not tell me this was going to happen no doctors told me maybe they did maybe they did you know in all honesty maybe they did and i just have no recollection of it but i know that this guy just showed up in my room and he's like all right this is what we're going to do and i was like you know you're a kid you're like all right yes to pull up my penis then boy he made a he made a house call he came to your room he, he came to the 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 i think he was a specialist no you were in the hospital though right yeah i was in a hospital uh, yeah. we're, ta- we're talking about cystoscopies people in case you're just yeah. tuning in. cameras in the pee hole so i was i was long story short i was very traumatized andrew very very traumatized as a yeah. kid um I, they I had imagine. I, I think they had, I think they ended up giving me two hundred dollars because I would not pee, and and they that's one of the things you have to do is you have to pee. You can't hold your and I would scream at the top of my lungs. Nurses from different stations would come in. I mean, it was it was just a very very traumatic. So I told him, and then one day I find urine in my blood and uh, blood in my urine. I mean, and uh, uh, I knew I knew once I once that happened, I'm gonna have to have that done. So then he has it done and I'm I'm talking to him and he's like, Oh yeah, it's it's not fun. And so I went today and oh. you can be I, the thing that I'm gonna request, I mean I did request, and he's gonna see if the insurance will cover it is if I be put to sleep. Because that's the only way that I will do it. No, Johnny tried that. They said they wouldn't do it, right? Yeah, they gave me a big stink they wouldn't do. It. I talked to my uncle who or my cousin who's a urologist, he said well, some people do request it, and I try to talk them out of it because it's it's way more expensive. It's a lot more involved. You have to hire an anesthesiologist, someone else to monitor all this stuff, and us as opposed to a ten minute in and out. So, yeah. but I was like, yeah, whatever. But I just got all zonked out on CBD gummies when I went. Yeah, I'm 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 just terrified. I'm just terrified. It's like causes just talking about it causes like. Uh, a reaction in my body and down there where I'm just like, I can't, 
But he, you know, he brought up the C word, cancer, and I was like, well, you know, you asked me this, Johnny. You're like, well, what if it? What if it? And him asking the doctor saying it could be, he's like, it's not. I don't know. I've not examined you. He goes, but that is one of the reasons why I need to go in there to see if there's a tumor because you had blood. So, and it wasn't like you, Johnny. You, you, you said you had microscopic. Yeah, blood. mine you can't even see. It was only microscopic. No, you no, looked I like coke ship. coming out. I was on a ship and you know looked down and the toilet is red and my the you know I'm like what the, you know just freaked out i freaked out so you know there <laughs> might there might there might be so i know i'm going to have to, i i complaint, told you i wouldn't do it complaint number 6 this one came from your room steward <laughs> this guy's <laughs> toilet was this full of blood. blood everywhere in the bathroom <laughs> oh. uh that's horrible you know it's occurring to me like uh, I, you may have heard this uh, so, uh, I think like um, some female comedians will have this premise sometimes or, or it's just kind of like a common train of thought, but like there's, there'll be some horrible procedure that a woman has to go through or, or like birth control or whatever. And they'll be like, Oh, well, if it was a man, they would have had this figured out by now. Or if this was for men, it would take like if, if yeah. men, if men had the babies, then abortions would be on every corner and, and they would be painless and all this stuff. But this is an example Ugh. of a thing where obviously there are limits to science because you're like, we're men are in charge making decisions and we're still doing this to find like the x-rays don't get in there. You know what I mean? Like an MRI can do this. No, that, that can't do the inside. I agree. Yeah, but I I agree with him. Like you can't, you cannot have some type of technology where we don't have to shove a camera up the pee hole. Like, look at he is reacting because he. Ha I'm telling you, that's uh, this the thought of it, the thought of going <laughs> through that again. But, but yeah, why can't why can't you be like, can you just drill a hole in my stomach, would, like yeah. hip, or like yeah, or my yeah. groin? And go in that way. I'd rather have an invasive surgery. Not only that, not, my, my friend just texted me because I told her where I was. And she brought up that she doesn't want to do a colonoscopy. They put you to sleep for that. I they know. put you to sleep no, for that. No, I don't think so. I think they give you that dreamy, yes. that dreamy no. medicine, I thought. I was out. I was out. You I were had out? Allergy. Yes. I was yeah. out. I woke up. Uh, I can send you the video my family sent to me waking up. And, and it's out. up your butt. I mean, that's a completely different. That's a bigger hole. It's a way bigger way hole. Way bigger hole. Oh, stuff's, Johnny's. Big stuff's coming and going out of there all the time, you know? Yeah, Johnny's, Johnny's is bigger than your, your Andrew's. <laughs> How do you know? Hold and release. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen. I want to get to some of these subjects. I'm so excited to see. Well, we got, we got okay. to start We've with got time the for one you told me about. We got what? time for one, one. Yeah, we got topic, time for one, and then we can do one in the post show in the in our Patreon part. All right. So do one, well, and then we'll we'll go do one in the post show. Okay. So this is uh, okay. So <laughs> this is this is an ongoing argument with Johnny and I, <laughs> and this is why I love men because this what I'm about to what this will be a discussion. Andrew will get into it, and he'll he'll like try to solve it. A woman would go, "What?" fuck is wrong with you guys how could you sit there and so this has been an ongoing thing my the, the woman that i would push my wife into moving traffic on live tv to spend a, a two nights with is selma two Hyatt. Nights. two nights two nights you hear that fanny two nights not one not normally when you're making that exaggeration it's one night that's great two <laughs> nights okay two nights so majority <laughs> Johnny and I have this uh, this relationship where we can just call one another. Go, hey, listen, would you suck a donkey's dick for uh, thirteen thousand dollars? And and I'll go, hang on, yes, just yeah. like that. And then he'll be like, all right, I gotta go, gotta go back. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll let him know. I'll call you back later with the arrangements. So we get into this, we get in this conversation um, about Selma Hayek, and and this is true. I, I would I would like. 
and I gotta I gotta say this carefully so your audience doesn't get it wrong. There was a story of Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> there was a story of Charlie. There's nothing Chaplin. to get wrong. <laughs> There's a story of Charlie Chaplin that he used to like to to lay underneath a glass table and watch women poopy on the table. Now, Andrew, have you ever heard that 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 about Charlie Chaplin? I I have not. No. Okay. It's a true. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of his uh, earlier work, I guess, where he just sort of <laughs> waddled around with a cane. I didn't I didn't see any of this stuff. But go all ahead. right. So whether it's true or not, myth, uh, you know, legend, myth, or whatever, <laughs> um, it 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 is a story that this is something that you know is brought up every now and then about Charlie Chaplin. Okay. It's brought up so, all the time. Every, you know, you should see these block parties in my neighborhood. That's all he's talking about. Party. You know, Charlie Chaplin used to like to get shit on. Oh, hey, wow. buddy, no, take the ball no, over here. No, no, <laughs> he does not like to be, this is the point of, you got to get it. No, on the glass. Like, yeah, it's, he's laying underneath the glass. So that made me think, man, you know, first time you hear that, like you, you're like, that's disgusting. But then I'm, I'm a freak, right? So I was like, yeah, I, I, I think I could watch some hot girls, you know. So Johnny and I get in this conversation and he's like, OK, so you, you know, how would it go? I'm like, well, you know, if I met her, I, you know, I'd talk to her and I'd be like, hey, listen, uh, and this is going to be a weird question. But I was just wondering if um, <laughs> if I could uh, if I could watch you, you know, push out a log and she'd be like, what? And like, yeah, I just, I, I just, I don't want to touch you. Nothing sexual. I'm not going to have my, my, my wiener in my hand. I just, I just want to see you because you're stunningly beautiful. You're hot. Uh, you're very classy. Uh, I just can't picture you doing that. So, and then Johnny goes, okay. And what if she said she would do it? And I go, well, I would remove myself from the room and I'd come back in a full hazmat suit. And this is when Johnny goes, whoa, 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 time out, time out. What are you talking about? I go, what are you talking? He goes, he goes, you're going to be in a hazmat suit? And I go, yeah. He goes, well, that's fucking offensive. I go to It's who? rude. It's rude. Said, yeah, he goes, it's rude. I go, what do you mean it's rude to who? He goes, to Selma Hayek. I go, what the fuck are you talking about? I go, he goes, you, and then we go through the whole thing. Wait, hang on a minute. <laughs> we go through- <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> we go through the Getting whole- too excited. We go through the whole thing and he goes, let me get this straight. And he goes through the whole thing. And then when she says, yes, you're going to excuse yourself and you're going to come back in a full house. I go, yes. He goes, that's fucking rude. And I go, it's not rude. How is it rude? So this has been an ongoing. I will ask strangers. Well, not every stranger. You don't want to walk up to your McDonald's person who's giving your food. But yeah, I will. I will ask, you know, comics mainly. And and I'll, it'll be it'll be tipsy top. You know, one will say. Two will say, yeah, 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 I agree. So my thing is, I didn't, I didn't say I want to smell it. I didn't say I want to play with it. I didn't say any of that. I just asked her if I could see her. Now I need to remove myself from the smells because I have a very, very weak constitution. It won't be good if I smell it. I don't want to touch it. I just want to be in the room, watch it and go, all right, Selma, thank you. And I'm out. Andrew, do you agree with me? Uh, don't I, Andrew, hang on! Don't jump to just think it out. I I'm didn't talking. I'm, I have to talk. Let this him out. speak. Let him speak. I, I have to talk this. Out. <laughs> First of all, I like how you acted out the conversation of bringing it up to Selma Hayek. Like, so I would say, you know, I just want to see you take a dump on me, and then she was like, "What? That's crazy!" Like, you gave her like somewhat of a what well, that's great but then she's still listening not the like her bodyguards just tackling you and murdering you while she runs away for her life but uh i i i hate to say it i gotta go with johnny on this if you're the one bringing it up you yeah. have to be into the you have to be into it in a way like if you're like my thing if she was like my thing is to take a shit on you and you're like well look i want to make you happy but i'm gonna need to wear a full hazmat suit mm -hmm. then fine but you're the know. one you're the you're the fucking pervert here <laughs> so 
So you got to go all in and just, and if it's the glass thing, fine. I mean, you could be like, Hey, and I happen to have this huge uh, piece of glass in my house right over my bed. Uh, so it's really convenient, but yeah. I, I, I gotta go with Johnny. I think I would be a little turned up, you know, like, uh, cause when me it's, it's very off putting, you know, when people come in, like my wife and I had COVID before the vaccines when she was giving birth to my daughter, we had COVID as she was giving birth and the, and then no one had the vaccine yet. So when the nurses came in, they had full on hazmat suits. And even though we knew intellectually, we knew like they have to do this for their own health. It was very off putting. You're like, Oh, of what course. are we like an alien or something like, yeah, geez. but, but listen, and this is got it. you got to take this in the real world. Like this is an actual. Oh yeah. I yeah. I got to <laughs> take this in the real world. That's right. Quit being Hayek. silly, this Andrew. Bella Andrew, Hayek. stop yeah. being silly. Bella Hayek taking a own. dump on Jason <laughs> Russell. I got to really, no, I got to no, ground myself thing. here. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. I did not ask her to do it on me. That's the, that's the verbiage. Well, I then said, just get a camera. Just no, put I, a camera I, in the toilet. I no, I would I, no. I want to be in the room. I literally want to be in the yeah. room. I, you and, can't have it both ways. Yeah, but I'm if sorry. I, if I if I my beautiful little, you can put my, cotton balls. If it's not visual, you can put cotton balls up your nose, and you can uh, wear goggles. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You can wear swim goggles and like nose plugs, but I can't do a full hat. A hazmat. That's just <laughs> full hazmat. You're the one asking. <laughs> just scuba gear. You can have scuba gear. <laughs> I do. I do not. Now, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, uh, I'm going to meet her. I know I'm going to meet her and I'm going to have to bring no. this up to her. No, I'm not going to meet no, her. No, not the qu not for her to, I'm going to bring this whole scenario up to her. And then that's, you know, you see me on TMZ. Well, Kitty. you'll say bomb at an airport, so maybe you will <laughs> say that to Selma Hayek. I don't know. Selma, so, uh, you bump into her at groceries. Her funny story um, <laughs> that I completely invented in my head. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Jason, do you have any uh, dates you want to plug before we wrap things up here? Uh, yes. I will be at Laughs in Tucson for New Year's Eve. So if you're in that area, you come out and we're going to have some fun on New Year's Eve. And you'll get to meet my wife. Beautiful. And my, ki my kids and my wife are coming with me. So, ah, oh. all right, Johnny. Uh, September 7th, I'll be at Vibe Stock, a festival in Dodgeville, Wisconsin. And then uh, October 4 through 5, I'll be at the Jukebox Comedy Club in Peoria. And. Jukebox! September 27th, I'll be uh, Green Bay uh, doing comedy, Green Bay, Fox Valley comedy. Okay. Check out those shows. Uh, how about this? I'll be in Vegas, September 20th and 21st at the Wise Guys in the Arts District in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, it's going to be celebrating my birthday with some friends and doing some shows. So come on out. My birthday is not till October 4th, but we're mer merging it with my buddy jason's birthday in august so my daughter's is uh, october 2nd look at that Ver, uh does she libra does she want to go to vegas we just went we just went a couple weeks ago we oh you did, Blue did Man you, Group. where'd you stay oh it was it wasn't uh last time we were we stayed at the pyramid but this time was just a, a budget trip so some weird ass hotel all right well jason look into do you know that. my birthday jason what's that do you know my birthday, Jason? Because <laughs> I know yours is January 7th. Let's see. Nope, oh, January 10th. No. Oh, yeah, my daughter's January 7th. January 10th. Yours, okay. yours is, uh, yours is, <laughs> yours, great. yours is in the summer. I know that. That's all I know. All right, October 15th. Thank you for listening, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Cavalry.